New radiator fans, new radiator, let's get to work. What's up guys, in this episode of B is for Build, we have left Portland, we are heading to Silverton to get back, meet back up with the BRZ. We got the new radiator like I showed you and the new uh, fan system, fans and fan shroud. And we're gonna go ahead and reinstall those on the car and we're gonna try and do it obviously better than last time in the way that we don't want it to break, but also make improvements on top of what we did last time. Button the car back up and get it back to Portland so we can get it back in the shop for the rest of the upgrades that we have planned this week, which are really major and gonna be really fun. Stay tuned. trailer is borderline out of control, but he's got two pieces of gold on the back. I want these! Well, I'm feeling pretty lucky. We have almost the perfect weather day to be out here working. It's like a little bit overcast, not too hot, not too cold. I'm really excited about that. That's gonna help things go a little bit faster. Uh, I got the two packages down here, radiator and the radiator fan set up. I'm gonna unbox them and start to like play around, mate them together and see how they're gonna look together and attach to each other and all that good stuff. From an unboxing standpoint, everything looks as it should. I am happy with the products that I ordered. So this is the same radiator that we saw, obviously, but a brand new one. So the other one's gonna get repaired. We know that we can just braze it with some aluminum, and I'll put that on the Aston Martin, because these are really good radiators. Um, and the new fan setup is a set of Mishimoto twin fans. Uh, it's 4,000 CFM total uh, pulling power. So these are pulling fans uh, for both the fans. So that's good, and it's got a good shroud. And the reason that I did with this was I didn't. So remember, before we had this square, and the other parts of the radiator weren't being weren't being actively pulled on by the fans. This fan setup covers almost the entirety of the radiator. It's a little tricky to order because this thing actually sticks out sideways, so I had to make sure that I didn't get too close to that side. So we're pretty good, but this one's clearly meant to bolt on to uh, a different radiator right there and there, and there and there. Uh, the, the, the clips aren't getting in the way of anything, so I'm not going to cut them off now, uh, but we do need a way to attach this radiator, uh, or the radiator fan uh, and shroud, to the radiator. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to drill holes, um, like here, 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 and here, and then we can use those uh, plastic um, radiator mounting ties that go through the radiator and into the shroud, the plastic shroud ties. And then what will happen is this bar right here in the car, that bar right there, will act as a support holding the bottom of this tray right there and that'll hold it up uh, so it'll be kind of doing double duty and it'll be a nice snug fit. So that's the next thing is I gotta mark the holes. This is exactly where the radiator shroud needs to be on the radiator. I'm gonna mark the holes, drill them out, install this on the radiator. I believe that's not a stupid move to do this early in the game. Yeah, let's do it. There we go, this is the new fan and fan shroud setup. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. I actually took the shroud and the fans and flipped them upside down because I wanted the cables to come out of the bottom. Can't imagine that that's gonna be an issue. We're not using any more of the aluminum ducting tape. We're using, there's foam in between here. So that'll keep, <laughs> that'll keep a little spacing on the fans. I did check out the fans and check the core, make sure they're not too close to the radiator. I definitely didn't make that mistake again. But that'll also space them out even a little bit more. Also, you know, the shroud being made out of solid aluminum is not going to flex as much as the plastic one would have, um, especially only using half of the old plastic one. So it looks real nice. Next step is to go ahead and install it back in the car. Radiator install went a lot more quickly this time around, so we're all good. We got our overflow tank right there, running into the top of the radiator, and then obviously our top hose down there, or right there, and our bottom hose down there. <clears throat> Everything's filled up, topped off. We're holding the water level right here. Uh, you can see that we're full up, and everything's looking good. So I'm going to continue working. Uh, we are now going to head and to, uh, going to wire up the 
Uh, dual fans, we're gonna wire up the fans to this, uh, this wire right there, that's the fan wire. And, uh, and then it'll be time for the intercooler. Things are looking good, intercooler is mounted up. Everything came together a lot faster than the time before, so that's awesome. Intercooler and transmission cooler are mounted. It's time for headlight, the front bumper, then it'll be all buttoned up and it's time to take it for a rip. All right, that's a wrap. Let's jump in and see if she starts up. And we gotta take it for a test drive. For some reason I'm not hearing the fans. Come on. All right, let's try this again. There we go, I can hear the fans now. Uh, I had the relay uh, for the fans wired up incorrectly. Let's get started. Oh, that's that button, here we go. What to do? Yeah! Damn, I hate to say it, but a lot of things went wrong on this drive. So first thing is we were, I noticed we were overflowing out of the top overflow, but we weren't going out of the bottom one, which should be easier to overflow. I came back here and parked, and the fans weren't running. I have no idea, so the fans were not operating at all. Uh, we didn't reach overheating temperatures, not even close, but we started overfilling out of here first. So we may have just had an air bubble in the system when we uh, refilled it. So it might be like a necessity to lift the front of the car when we refill it. So I gotta figure out the fans, electrical, and why that's going. The other thing is that when we started up the car, we're leaving, that's how rich the car is running. We're leaving soot on the ground. Um, and I, I think that, I honestly think our math has to be bad because it does an auto correction later after it runs for a little bit, but before then, it, it just started running so, so rich. And uh, that's really, really strange. So anyways, we got th some things to work on. Uh, I gotta let this system cool down and then uh, we're gonna have to burp the air bubble out of the system and figure out the electrical on the fans. All right, the fans were having problems because I actually did the relay wrong twice. Now the relay is wired up correctly for the fan, so that's good to go. Um, what else? The overflow is now attached to the overflow tank, so there's essentially two of these running to the same overflow tank. So that is important. I feel like it could have burped the bubble out of the system on its own, except for the air was coming out of here and then the water would have came out of here and before it could have sucked it back up into the system and then now it, it can't because obviously there was no return. So now there will be a return to our overflow. So, it's time to give it another try. I went to start the car and I just got like the scariest sound ever out of the engine. I don't even know what it was. This is freaking me out. Well, this breaking in process has been absolutely anything but easy. Uh, and we just, you know, we keep finding things, which is good. I'm really glad we're finding them here rather than there. So here's the short answer is the engine is not blown. What happened was, is I did, I do remember this when I was out on the test drive, I hit a very extreme bump and uh, a bump of whatever, a fault in the road. I don't know. Anyways, I hit something and I remember, and I remember just this huge drop and I was like, oh geez, that was a little sudden. And, uh, and I kept driving and whatever. And I got the car back and we worried about the cooling stuff. Now I go to start it and it sounds like it's grinding. sounds like it's scraping. It sounds crazy. Uh, when it was running all right, when I stopped, it wasn't running great, but it was running all right. Uh, I got under the car and you could see that the the first big the, the crank on the car um, it, it, The bigger backside of it has actually dropped down So the engine has dropped down from where it normally mounts and it is landing on that cross section now And that's the grinding sound we're hearing we're hearing the crank that big spindle on the crank uh, hitting that cross cross member cross section uh, on the front and now uh, that cross section doesn't actually do anything so I could like you know trim it out or remove it or scoop it out but but the engine is actually just like too low it's it's like too close to the um, power steering rack now and and other things now so we've like lost our, our safety zone so the engine now needs to go back up so how this happened was is I must have had the brackets there are these bolts that um, 
It's like the engine mounting brackets to the side of the engine, and in there there's a variable bolt that goes up and down, and that's how you adjust the height. And I must not have tightened those down quite well enough, uh, so that's something that we can fix. I just gotta get a hoist from my shop, bring it back down here, hoist the engine up, and adjust it. <laughs> so it's gonna be a fun day tomorrow, uh, but we'll get it fixed, that's how we do. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, here we go for another day. I got the hoist behind me. It's time to set it up on the car. We got to relieve some of that stress on the engine so I can get under there and figure out those mounting brackets. Wow, that was really not that hard. I just, for some reason, imagined the whole setup and lift up would be much more difficult, but that was like 10 minutes. So we've relieved the um, motor mounts of, th of their duty. This motor is tight and hung on this engine hoist right here and I've, I've literally like started to pull it out of the car. So I, I saw it lift up. So I believe it is safe to now get underneath there and undo the motor mounts. I wish we had our proper quick jack and there's not a lot of room under here now. That's like, that's about where I need to be on both sides. Um, but hey, we're out in the country working. So uh, I'm gonna do my best to jump underneath there and try and remove the motor mounts. Man, something about that just looks cool. I know it obviously means death, but I do like the way it looks. So, I got the motor mounts out. Let me show you. So these are the two motor mounts, and this is what happens when the, uh, the motor slid down. So the issue was that I just probably didn't tighten down these bolts quite tough enough. I probably just you know, used a little elbow grease as much as I had in me. And then when I hit a large bump out there on a country road, the momentum and the weight of the engine slid these brackets uh, to maximum down. Now, it is a little bit of a gamble uh, with where I put them back, because you guys know how hard, like how close the hood clearance was. This one, no, not that one. This one actually has a little bit of a mark, and I can see that at one point this washer was all the way down. This one, I'm not seeing any marks. It's possible this one never even moved. Um, but what I'm gonna do is, why it's a little bit of a gamble is because I'm gonna adjust them, and then I'm gonna weld the washer to the backing plate. So, for now, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them at, I'm gonna put this one back where it was, and I'm gonna put this one at three quarters maximum height, and then I'm gonna weld them. I'm just gonna put some, some pretty heavy duty tacks and then obviously tighten down the bolts again as tight as I can get them. And with the welding plus the strength of the bolts, I'm confident that that won't be an issue. And then um, if I'm wrong, when I get back to the shop, I will obviously have to undo this one more time and grind those tacks off and make another adjustment if the hood doesn't fit. But I'm pretty confident that the hood will fit. So uh, yes, yeah, time to get to work. And I think uh, I'm gonna feel good with these washers welded on here. That's gonna be a really strong because uh, I was always worrying about the engine bouncing around because I mean there there is a little bit of play with these bushings as well Obviously, that's what they're there for but uh, I'm gonna feel good with these things welded in here Okay, well that's a wrap on these guys. Just a couple tacks, or a little bit more than tacks, but yeah, just one, they're spot welds. Uh, to hold that washer in there. This one, three quarters of the way maxed. This one maxed. I think that's very close to how we had it before because this is the side that has all the uh, turbo piping and stuff on there, which is another, was another kind of danger area. So I think we're all good. It's time to go ahead and reinstall these. By the way, these are an insane pain to get out of the car. Uh, without pulling the engine out, but I got I got it done because I'm, I'm the greatest. Anyways, going back in. All right, the motor mounts are in. I actually had to pop the welds off of one of them and adjust it a little bit. That was that side, uh, bringing the motor down a little bit. So now the motor is now sitting in there under its own weight with the motor mounts back on it. It's time to lower the car down and take it back out for another test drive. Fingers crossed, the cooling system will work.
All right, guys, well, I got great news. This is now a happy car that lives at 185 degrees. That's its, its, its happy place. There it is. It goes above that when I really get on, I stay in boost for a long time, and then the coolant temperature just comes on down on its own and does what, you know, a cooling system's supposed to do. And while I'm in traffic and I'm going slow, the fans are actually able to cool it down even further than 185. So that's working too. Finally, finally. So it's time to pack up some stuff and head back to Portland. The next leg of the trip is, it's, it's rush hour now, and I gotta try and drive this thing back through rush hour traffic back to Portland. Fingers crossed we can make it home and get this thing back to the shop. We almost made it. Doing the slow roll by a Mexican restaurant. There's no cars, the car's not running right now. Oh, great. So it seems that something with the throttle is my guess. But the temperatures are good. Everything's like reading good. I don't know if it has to do with the electronic throttle or our air, our air fuel ratios are even good. But it just, it just can't run. This is probably whatever problem that we were running into before. Or, or it's possible I ran out of gas. It's possible uh, there's a gas station across the street. I'm gonna go buy more gas. Could have been it. I don't know how many times I'm just gonna be running around trying to fix the car in a hurry, but I got a gas can. You're most likely to find me if you're in Portland, just along the road somewhere broken down. Not at a car meet these days, nope. Here she be. Please tell me you need gas. All right, bad news, it wasn't gas. Something is fundamentally hosed in this car. This is what happens when I go to turn it on. Dead. At least I broke down in front of a Mexican restaurant if I want to get some food. I'm, uh, I'm pretty bummed. I don't have any idea what this is. Um, you know, it's all about air, spark, fuel, right? You check all those things. Uh, I tried pulling the MAF, got the same result. I uh, also tried pulling the electronic throttle body so it would run in limp mode and uh, same result, it just could not stay going. Um, I don't have enough tools to get the spark plug cover off to double check spark, but there's, I see no reason that the spark should stop working. Um, and then the last thing is fuel. And I can tell that the fuel pump is going. I've added fuel. I can feel fuel uh, running through the fuel line. So I think it's either screwed up injectors or screwed up spark plugs. And I can't fix either of those on the side of the road here. I checked for any popped off intercooler hoses or anything like that and nothing. The system seems secure. So I think I have to call a tow truck, which is a bummer. Well, the obvious benefit to breaking down our bar is they have tequila and Corona. So things have been worse. <laughs> My ride's already here. Uh, tow truck's on the way to pick up the car. Car goes to the shop. I go back to my parents' house to go get the truck and uh, go after the car tomorrow. So, this sucked. Uh, obviously a lot of breakdowns uh, lately in the car. Here's the positive side. The odds are that whatever happened to the car to make it like finally stop working is probably the thing that was keeping it too rich in the beginning. And we'll get that fixed. Also, I have a lot of parts because I'm upgrading the car. A lot of parts already coming that are going to help to fix. So that's the end of this episode. I'm going to leave it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you know all the same stuff. Merch is at bsforbuild.com, and we are bsforbuild all over social media. Cheers, boys. We're going to get it on the next one.